This is a hard drive, and this is an SSD. So hard drives are inexpensive, but they give you lots of storage, however they're slower, mechanical hard drives are slower than SSDs, whereas SSDs are expensive, they give you less storage, but are faster than mechanical hard drives. So essentially an SSD is the complete opposite of a hard drive, and a hard drive is the complete opposite of an SSD. But what if you could have the best of both worlds? What if you could have a hard drive that's cheap, comes with a lot of storage, but it's also incredibly fast. Well, this is what I'm going to show you in this video, how to turn a hard drive into an SSD. So thanks to Intel and Seagate for sponsoring this very interesting project. So grab some snacks, sit back, relax, and let's take a look at how we can actually do this. How can we turn a hard drive into an SSD? So an SSD with hard drive storage, hard drive price with SSD speeds. Let's have a look. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is with Intel's Optane memory. So this is a small M.2 drive, and this thing is going to turn this monster of a hard drive, the 4 terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive, into something that should match an SSD in performance, if not even beat it. Okay, so here's what you would need to get this project started. So obviously you need an Intel Optane memory, uh, but besides the Intel Optane, you also need an Intel 7th generation newer processor, so Kaby Lake or Coffee Lake or newer, as well as a supported motherboard. So I've actually included the link in the description with all the supported motherboards and processors, but in case you want to use my own components, I'm actually using an Intel 8700K processor among with the ASUS Z380 Maximus X Hero motherboard. Aside from this, I'm also using the Seagate Barracuda drive that I showed you, the 4TB one, among with a Samsung 750 EVO 120GB SSD. Now, in terms of the actual installation, I was actually surprised to see how easy this was. So it's pretty much plug and play. You just install the Optane onto the M.2 slot on your motherboard, and most of the supported motherboards, by the way, don't even need a BIOS update. They just work straight out of the box. After that, you simply install Windows on a hard drive, not on the Optane. So this is very important. Windows goes on a hard drive, not the Optane. And then once you're booted, you just download the Intel Optane memory.exe file. And that's pretty much it. So everything would just set up by itself. Intel's Optane Memory installation tool even adjusts all the required BIOS settings, so you don't even need to touch those at all. And once that's done, open up the Intel Optane Memory app, and you'll see that your system is being accelerated by Optane, and that's pretty much it. Now, Optane is fully functional and working on your system. Now, you might notice that Optane isn't that fast, day one, and that's because Optane needs to optimize the system based on the apps that you actually use. So there's a scheduler here, and you can see when uh, when the next optimization is going to take place. Now, unfortunately, you cannot actually manually schedule uh, this scheduler, but pro tip, you can actually do that, not from the Optane app, but if you press the Windows key plus R and type in uh, task schd.msc, uh, and then go to Intel, double click it here. And from here, you can not only just run the optimization process manually, but if you go into triggers, you can create the manual scheduler with uh, whatever date and time works best. Okay, so we got the Optane memory up and running. And how much did it actually speed up my hard drive? Well, spoiler, my 4 terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive is now crazy, crazy fast. I'm not even going to compare it with a standard hard drive, but instead, I'm going to compare this with a full-fledged SSD instead. So the Samsung 750 EVO. So I'm going to do seven different tests and here's how the Optane performs in every single one of them. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a few things that most people use daily and then move on to the more professional apps. Okay, so the first test that I'm going to do is actually a boot test. Let's see which one of these actually boots faster. And here the SSD booted up in a full 11 seconds, which is actually pretty standard for a SATA-based SSD, while the hard drive plus Optane combo booted up in just 3.23 seconds, which is just this is crazy. This is more than a three times speed increase with the Optane. Okay, but what about the app load time? So I'm going to test out a few apps that most of you use on a regular basis. So starting off with Chrome, the SSD opened up Chrome in 1.7 seconds, while the Optane plus hard drive opened up Chrome in 0.9 seconds. What about the Microsoft Edge browser? Well, SSD 1.4 seconds, Optane 0.8 seconds. So a pretty big improvement here as well. And then let's try something that's a bit more demanding. So Photoshop, SSD opened the Photoshop uh, in eight seconds versus seven seconds on the Optane. So almost the same. And when it came to Premiere, the SSD opened up Premiere in seven seconds while the Optane was quite a bit slower. 
not really, it was 9 seconds, so it was still really, really fast. Moving on to Cinebench R15, the SSD opened this up in 2 seconds versus 1.7 seconds on the Optane, so really, really impressive performance so far. Let's try Spotify, lots of you use Spotify daily. Uh, the SSD opened up Spotify in 2.6 seconds versus 1.7 seconds on the Optane. So yeah, there we go, in most cases the Optane was even faster than the SSD, which is, which is crazy. Moving on to a few more demanding apps, we have quite a few large games here. So in terms of Overwatch, this is the first game that I'm going to test. This one opened up in 26 seconds on the SSD and on the Optane it took quite a bit longer to load, 45 seconds to fully load. But that was actually the first time that I loaded Overwatch on the Optane. The second time, it only took 28 seconds. The third time, it took 26 seconds. And that was exactly the same as on the SSD. And then the next seven times, it also took exactly 26 seconds, which was quite interesting. So essentially, the first time you open up a specific app, it's going to take you longer. But once that's open, the app files, the upload files are transferred onto the Optane. And from there, every single time you open it, it's going to be basically the same as an SSD, in some cases, even faster. Moving on to another game, we have StarCraft 2. So this one opened up in 12 seconds on the SSD. And on the Optane, pretty much the same thing. So first time it opened up in 35 seconds, and then the second time in 12 seconds, third time, 12 seconds, fourth time, and so on, exactly 12 seconds as on the SSD. And finally, we have a very popular game that I wanna test right now, and that is Fortnite. You've probably heard of it and even played it. So yeah, Fortnite took 27 seconds to load on the SSD, followed by one minute and eight seconds on the Optane. And interesting enough, no matter how many times I've tried it to uh, open Fortnite on the Optane, it would not be faster than one minute and exactly eight seconds on the Optane. So I believe that this was because uh, the Optane ran out of space, storage space to load such a large game, such as Fortnite. However, with StarCraft 2, which was an even larger game that was 30 plus gigabytes versus 20 gigabytes, which was Fortnite, it was basically as fast as an SSD, which was really, really strange. Now, I've restarted my PC quite a number of times, and I've ran all of those tests that you've seen repeatedly over the course of a week, and I've noticed pretty much the exact same result. So the most used apps, the, the apps that you've seen tested in this video, opened up fast, if not even faster than an SSD, with a single exception being Fortnite. Now, aside from the boot times and the upload times, another place where I've noticed a pretty big performance improvement was in terms of the file explorer. So file browsing in general felt very fluid on both. Uh, I've opened up a few of my device shots folders with over 15 gigabytes of 4K60 videos and the previews, the thumbnails took 6 seconds to load on the SSD versus 8 seconds on the Optane. However, once I've loaded them uh, once, they were fully loaded on both, so I don't really have to wait for the preview thumbnails to appear again. So in terms of browsing, the file explorer felt about the same, with no major speed differences between the two, which is very impressive considering that the Optane is linked to a hard drive, basically. And now when it comes to Windows Search, I tried searching for my PANA 3288 file, which is a 4K60 video file, and it took about one second, if not even less, on the Optane to find it, whereas the SSD took between one to two seconds. So again, documents that you use the most, and your most recently accessed files, they would be pretty much instantly accessible for you on the Optane. Now, something that most of us do on a regular basis is copying files. But instead of copying one single file, I decided to copy a folder full of multiple files, 4K60 video files in this case, uh, which the folder, the whole fold, folder was about five gigabytes in size. And the SSD took about 17 seconds to do that, while the Optane took one minute and 46 seconds which was a lot. However, the second time I copied the same folder, it only took 15 seconds on the Optane, which was even faster than on the SSD itself. So this is because, again, the data was not copied from the hard drive, uh, but now it was actually copied from the Optane, reason why it was so fast. Now, moving on to a few pro apps, I want to test out Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. So I've decided to open up a few 22 megapixel raw images, and these took exactly seven seconds to open on both. So no performance difference here at all. And now in terms of the actual video editing, importing uh, 4K60 videos into Premiere took 16 seconds to import on, uh, on the SSD versus 11 seconds to fully import on the Optane. So almost exactly the same, a bit faster on the Optane. This was about 15 gigabytes in size, all the footage, by the way. Now, in terms of the actual playback of 4K60 video, it was really, really fluid on both. Essentially, 4K60 video played back in real time with zero frame drops on my PC, which was really, really impressive. And finally, exporting a 10 minute 4K60 video in Premiere took 24 minutes and 38 seconds on the SSD versus 23 minutes and 47 seconds on the Optane. So it was a tiny bit faster on the Optane because of the uh, more sustained write speeds, but other than that, they were really, really similar. Okay, so as a conclusion, 
Wow, I was honestly not expecting to see these results. I was expecting the Optane Plus hard drive to be in between a hard drive, a standalone hard drive, and an SSD. But for the most part, it seems that the Optane was even faster than an SSD in some cases, which was really, really impressive and unexpected. Now, keep in mind that the speed applies to uh, the items that you use the most. So, for example, if you decide to copy a 50 gigabyte file, it would take you about the same time as it does on a standalone hard drive, since, you know, the Optane is only 32 gigabytes in size. But in reality, you know, no one really copies uh, or works with a single 32 gigabyte file in size. And when it comes to apps that are over 32 gigabytes in size, it seems like the, uh, the Optane optimizes the boot files, essentially essentially copies the boot files from those apps onto the Optane, while something like textures, audio files, and so on remain on a hard drive. So this is why uh, I could have apps with more than a total of 32 gigabytes on the Optane and still be able to boot them quickly off of the Optane. And in case you're wondering, the reason why the Optane is so fast is because, well, the Samsung 750 EVO, for example, it can do around 500 megabytes per second read and about 500 megabytes per second write, while the Optane can do 1.4 gigabytes per second read, which is almost three times what the SSD can do because of uh, that SATA connection, which is the bottleneck, and close to 300 megabytes per second in terms of the write speeds. Now, the write speeds are lower, as you can see, but I actually noticed that they were far more consistent than, uh, than on an SSD, especially when it came to transferring large files. So the SSD dropped to about 50 megabytes per second or even lower if a large number of small files were being transferred. Okay, so in the end, is the Optane really worth it? Well, that actually depends on the price. If this thing is really expensive, then I don't know, maybe not. But the good news is that it's really, really cheap. So the Optane actually starts at just 32 pounds in the UK or $38 in the US, that's for the 16 gigabyte model, or uh, 52 pounds in the UK or $60 for the 32 gigabyte model. And then the Seagate Barracuda drive starts at just 85 pounds in the UK or $76 in the US. So essentially for $150 or 115 pounds in the UK, you get four terabytes of Optane storage compared to $300 or about 280 pounds in UK for a one terabyte SSD. And then also in terms of the speed, the Optane plus Seagate Barracuda drive was even faster than the SSD in some cases. So by the way, I do recommend getting the 32 gigabyte model. That's actually the one that I've been testing in terms of the Optane. And yes, I would say that it's 100% worth it. It will speed up your hard drive by a lot. And the good news is that you don't really need to sacrifice on the storage. And in the end, this is literally the best of both worlds. By the way, the links to everything that I mentioned in the description for the Optane, uh, the 4 terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive that I've been testing it with, which by the way is a 5400 RPM hard drive and not the standard 5200 RPM hard drive, so even this is a tiny bit faster than a regular hard drive. And then I've also left the links for uh, all the motherboards, the supported motherboards, the supported CPU models, among with my own parts that I've used for this build in case you want to uh, in case you want to get those and in case you're interested in those. But yeah, there you go. This was quite an interesting project to take part in. Once again, thanks to Intel and Seagate for sponsoring this video. And also, if you want to see more interesting tech videos like this one, definitely subscribe and enable notifications by tapping on that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as a brand new video comes out. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about uh, the Intel Optane. Are you guys getting one or not? Uh, and what system are you currently using? Are you using a Mac or a PC? What are the exact specs? I'm really curious to see that uh, in the comments down below. But yeah, this was pretty much it. Perfect if you like, if you enjoyed it, so let me know. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Son of Tech, signing out. Cheers.